This bridge had its grand opening and has already gone viral for all the crazy wrong reasons. Like this. Street takeovers with cars doing donuts. Right, but one issue that you can see right now. Vandalism. Graffitis. One of the worst, influencers doing a haircut in the middle of the road to get their viral moments. It's at least the second time a barber has done it. So today, I'm going to talk to you about three possible design fails. Number one, the arches were easily accessed for climbing. There are two potential locations where the arches could be easily accessed for climbing. Here. See, I could, I could easily climb it up. And maybe here. See, right beneath the railings, there's actually like a platform of landing. Someone can actually climb over and then start sending the arches. It's relatively easy to be honest. Let's take a look at the video. Look at that. Then there was this dangerous stunt by two people who climbed on top of one of the 10 arches. Eventually they made their way back down. It's also obvious that they choose to climb the shorter arches and not the taller and steeper ones, right? Because they are just way more dangerous. But one thing you might not know is that the original design was intended for public to walk up the arches. Look at this. So in the early phase of the design, the architect Michael Mauslin is aware that the arches are fun and cool to walk up as a viewing deck. So what happened? Who took it out and why is it gone? They probably would have discouraged some kids or some other people for climbing up the arches and taking a selfie on it. So if the architect Mr. Michael Mausen and the city official Kevin DeLeon happens to watch my video, please consider making one of the arches as an observatory deck. Number two, bike lanes were not that well protected. File a hit and run report and are still looking for the driver. A it's a car accident waiting to happen to a cyclist. Shown here. With just a speed bump and a probably very weak plastic bullet, it would simply seem dangerous to be cycling openly next to a fast driving car. But in the architect's defense, the current protection are considered class 4 protection. So why is that designed this way? Because there's a requirement for a car to have the ability to pull over to their right side in case of emergency, which in this case is going into the bike lane. I don't think it's a good enough solution for such a landmark $588 million project. Number three, no surveillance systems to start with. The architect and city official is aware that there will be taggers doing graffitis earlier on. You know, that's, that's what's hurtful to me, because then what are people gonna say of LA, you know? Even at their previous bridge in this same location, there were already graffitis on it. So why did it become an issue here now, where people keep talking about graf graffitis and how much money is spent on the media? They are already estimated to spend about 700 to 800 thousand in graffiti remover. If you did realize there isn't any surveillance camera that's integrated to the arches right now, I think it's a it's a good idea to put some of it in. Wouldn't it be easier to have better preventive measures built in place to start with to reduce the case of graffiti up front rather than spending money to clean it up later on? So I noticed after all these incidents the city did react and suggested putting in cameras and regular police patrols in catching any taggers. This surveillance systems again here seems very reactionary and an afterthought. In the age of social media, a cinematic destination like this, with the thought of going viral on social media, 